Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. Blake Cousins here. We got a special report for you. We're in Bigfoot country, Sholo, Arizona. The mysterious Sasquatch has been spotted throughout these woods. And we're gonna be going over incredible videos submitted to us right here at Third Phase of Moon via Doc Skinner, who has obtained incredible footage of the elusive animal itself. We're gonna be meeting up with people that believe in Sasquatch. So buckle up everybody, let's get to it. We're gonna be meeting up with Doc Skinner. Thanks for joining us. So you say the local residents around here have been experiencing Sasquatch for hundreds of years now? That's right. So you've got some videos that you wanna share with us. And um, how'd you obtain these videos in the first place, Doc? Found them on social media. Uh, found this one in particular that had three new videos, but the second and third one are what I wanted us to check out. So there's a lot of videos in regards to Bigfoot Sasquatch, but a lot of them are speculative. Like there's a lot of hoaxing going on yes. in the UFO Bigfoot community, but then there seems to be some authentic evidence that comes forward as well. So, so yeah, this, this video right here says three impressive uh, Bigfoot videos. And the second and third one is what I wanted you to see. The first one here, it, it looks like kind of like the, the Patterson video, but uh, not in an open field, it's along a tree line. The second one here is in Mississippi, where he's the Bigfoot is scourging inside a tree trunk in the swamp. We've just watched the video. What do you see here, Doc? Well, it's it's a open field that looks like it may be around winter, maybe springtime. A lot of dead trees around, so. You see this big long tree ridge along this open area and here's this creature walking along the tree line and he's just doing it very nonchalantly. So when we're looking at this video, it's, it's kind of interesting because the cameraman seems to be in stealth mode trying to capture the Sasquatch itself. But do we see if the Bigfoot is recognizing the cameraman? Is it trying to evade its presence or is it basically just walking along in the woods doing its own thing? So if, as you're watching this, one thing I, I like about this video, unlike others, is that they're always short. It's like they see Sasquatch and then it's over. This guy, I, I think he was hunting, so we might've been in camouflage and in, and in stealth mode. Um, but this creature just goes about his day and it's a compelling video. While I'm still looking at this, I'm trying to figure if it could be like a man in a suit, but again, the, the creature, it's large. I'd say approximately 10 to 11 feet in height. So, you know, that'd be kind of interesting for a man to be in a suit and walking on stilts at the same time in and maintain woods. balance. Yeah, that, in the woods, in mother nature. So it is compelling. And again, as you mentioned, the cameraman himself is trying to do his best to capture it, but then he's hiding behind the trees and trying to be in stealth mode. Was he a Bigfoot hunter or was he just out there you know, enjoying mother nature, trying to hunt wild game. Who knows? I mean, we found this, like I said, on social media, but it is a compelling video and uh, worth just taking a look at. So while we're out here, Doc, we're actually having our eyes peeled, keeping our ears open to hear if there's any kind of mysterious sounds. What are the general sounds of Bigfoot? It's like a howl. A howl? Yeah. But, you know, it is interesting because as heavy as they are, you could probably feel their footsteps as they approach uh, people in the woods. Mm -hmm. What are the people of Sholo thinking? Are they afraid that Bigfoot could break into their homes? Has there been any experiences like that before we get to the next Bigfoot video? So are people afraid out here? Not necessarily. Um, you know, we have tribes. We're surrounded by multiple tribes here and it's part of their culture. So it's, it's kind of accepted. Um, we we have bigfoot people up here but uh you don't really hear as much about it as you would at other places but uh people people have that feeling he's around we just heard something just moments did. ago did you we just did hear that? as we were getting ready to set up it's um it was kind of a howl but it was 
way over there, whatever it was. So, um, I don't know. Some people will communicate by bashing trees with large branches and that's supposedly a way of their communication. Um, been stories of rocks being thrown, hence why I'm continuously looking around. <laughs> you never know. Um, but there have been sites that have, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Little, little uh, home areas that they make up with tree branches and stuff that they break down. Those have been found in the area as well as footprints, which I happen to have some casts of those that were nearby. Actually, we're going to be looking at your casted molds of the Sasquatch footprints that you received earlier this year. But let's get to the next video that you wanted to submit. And it is compelling in your opinion, but we're going to share it with everybody and the panel members right now. So let's just roll it and let's take a look at what you got here, Doc. Well, this was supposedly uh, shot in Mississippi by a hunter and he was out in the swamp areas and he found what he says is Sasquatch. Uh, digging inside one of the trunks in the swamp for bugs and, and whatever to eat. That's just not something you normally see in a Bigfoot video. So that the fact that this was captured, and it was, it was a while back, but it is making its rounds again. Um, I mean, you could, if you zoom in, you can see a full body that almost looks ape-like. This hunter, like the other one, is trying to be stealthy, and he stays on it for a while. So that's, like I said, one of the bad things about these videos, they're always too short. So it's appreciative when they can stick around a little longer. So is Bigfoot like a carnivore, or just eating bugs and grubs, vegetarian? From what I've heard, like recently, Dark Hour told us last night in regards to a burial ground where all the animals that Sasquatch hunts, kind of he puts it in a pile. And they found like a wolf with its head twisted and ripped apart. Mm. And these things are pretty vicious. Is there people that go missing out here because of the Bigfoot? Not many that I've heard about, but being we do have national forests and it's tribal land, sometimes people do go missing. Um, I haven't heard of many associations with Sasquatch, but I wouldn't count it out since there has been said to be Sasquatch families around in this area. As a matter of fact, now that I'm recalling, when we did Disclosure Con um, up here at the Honda Casino, there's a, a forest tree line and we had uh, multiple speakers that were speaking at the event that heard growls and it, it scared them and they came to tell me about it. I was like, well, it's tribal land and things like that happen. So it's very close to us. I mean, we, we don't have to drive that far, maybe just 10 minutes to where we could possibly come across Sasquatch. You know, it's really calm today too. So we could hear bas basically a needle drop in the woods. So it's interesting. We're looking out for footprints and those are some of the indicators of Bigfoot's presence in certain locations. And uh, right now we're not seeing anything, but recently you obtained some Sasquatch prints yes. and they've been casted and you have, uh, have them in your possession. We're gonna be looking at them very soon, but how did you come in possession of these cast prints? Uh, and it's in the area, right? Correct, I had a, a viewer, her name was Barb Baker, uh, inherited it from the gentleman that made the casts, who was a hunter and he passed away. So she got them and she didn't know what to do with them. So she says, if anybody was gonna have these, I want you to have them dark. So she brought them to me and as you'll see, they're, they're pretty massive. So it's crazy about these molds, these prints, you know, you see them on TV, but seeing them for the first time in person on how actually large these print molds are of the supposed Sasquatch is quite incredible. But you have a, mold right here that actually showcases toenails. Yes, this one right here. So this is one of three. Uh, two of them came from the local area and the third one came from the border on Washington State, or excuse me, Oregon and California. Um, 
This one, the third one here, is very, very intriguing because the other ones you see toes, but this one, it has a sharp points for toenails, um, which is something I haven't normally seen in footprints. And these are about 22 inches in length. So you could kind of see the heel and the arch of the toes. This one's quite large. It's just amazing, right? If you kind of compare it to one's foot, which I'll try and attempt to like. So let me just put this on the ground and actually get some side-by-side -side comparison because this is, uh, if you could imagine a creature this size and he came across this in the woods, it would freak the people out if they witnessed it in person. And uh, a lot of people have, and we've been sharing with you the videos, but you know, apparently there's a person right here in Sholo that has a Bigfoot in his front yard. Let's go take a look at that. Let's do it. So as we're coming out to the parking lot after our hunt, we met up with, what was your name? Uh, Prentice Johnson. Prentice, nice to meet you, man. Thanks for, uh, you know, joining us on Third Phase of Moon. And we just randomly asked you about Bigfoot encounters. And apparently you've had a Bigfoot encounter just about 40 miles from here? Yes. You said. Uh, tell me about it. Okay, so one night I was home, right? I was home and I was laying on the couch and like I was having this weird feeling of like, just like a weird, like a heavy feeling. And I was laying on the couch, you know, the window was open, you know, it was at night, probably like midnight already. And then like, not that far from my house, but like a maybe a good 200 yards, like I begin, like all the dogs are gonna go crazy. Like, like never before, I've never seen this before. I've seen them go crazy, but not this crazy. And like out of nowhere, like this big, huge shout, like a roar mixed up like with a female voice. Like it was, it was so weird. Like it, it, like it made my spirit sink in. Like I was that afraid. I literally sat there. Like I felt paralyzed. I couldn't move at all. And so I finally built that courage because you know, like uh, where I'm from, you know, our ancestors say to never be afraid, but to know that, but to know that our creator is with us. So like that, that gave me courage a little to get up and to like check outside, see what's going on. So I went outside and you know and out of nowhere like i i began to like once i went outside the dogs they were all like howling and like and they make this weird noise and like and they began to run straight run straight in the dark you know we have lights you know, lights and like it went, went, went running straight so i saw them and then like all the dogs all around me they all around my whole my whole neighborhood sorry my whole neighborhood they all began to like go barking crazy and everything and like it was so cool but afraid like scary at the same time it was so cool and scary but like i literally heard it running 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 it went running because there's a pond right there's a pond not that far from my house it went from there then from there it went to like another location but maybe 200 yards even like it was running like it was so freaky so scary and like and you know i'd be i, I thought i was crazy so i didn't want to tell nobody tell like my cousins that live in front of me um, I told him about it, you know, like, hey, I gotta get this off my chest, so, you know, I, I had to get off. So, like, I told him about it, and I was like, I don't know, you guys can make fun of me or not. I, I'm, you call me crazy if you want. Then sure enough, they are like, hey, don't worry, we heard it too. We hear it every now and then. And, like, and they were like, you know, I was like, really think about it. So I went to my grandpa, you know, he's an outer. I told him about it. I said, hey, I encountered something, and, like, my spirit is really, like, troubled about it. And he's all like, he said, that's, that whole area was, like, where our, our ancestors used to battle this thing, like this creature that used to roam that whole area. And like he's telling me about it, he said, no, all you can do is just pray. So he said, don't worry about it. You know, it's, it's not bothering you and, and you don't bother it. That's how you have like peace. So that's about it. You know, that's incredible. I appreciate you sharing your experience and you know, the tribals and the, the legends of the Sasquatch, they go on for, centuries and it's an amazing uh, thing that you've had that experience appreciate you sharing it with us right here at third yeah. phase of moon no you problem. know you're going on a prom night you have a great night and uh, congratulations on your uh, senior graduation um, coming up and have a great time tonight all right you too thank you all right appreciate it you know the incredible thing about sasquatch it is known amongst many around here the phenomenon it's real The tires, the tire thing is, uh, we've seen some videos on tire art on, online. And uh, it was really interesting because we're artists. We do a lot of art stuff. And I said, well, let's go big. Let's go bigger than they have. So we did, and we thought of Bigfoot because we're in the White Mountains. 
and that's what happened. And we did it in three weeks. He came, that's what he is. It's kind of tricky getting the tool to cut him though. Why, how? Well, because you can't get anything to cut that rubber, you know. With the... We had some trial and error. Yeah, we went to, uh, we went, ended up getting a oscillating tool that just vibrates mm -hmm. and it ended up cutting like butter. We had well, to make our own blades. Rubber's not easy to cut. Right. And especially because I want it to make, to look like hair. And so you can't just cut any tire either. It just <laughs> you know, burns. The, so <laughs> we figured out to cut the best ones to use was the um, golf cart tires. And that's what the, he's made out of pretty much. So there's accounts in, in this area that people have spotted Bigfoot. And that's where these prints that I showed you earlier. Right. So is this like based on actual accounts of people that you've uh, spoken to when you developed? Yes, yes. We we wanted to come up with something that was, I don't know the word you're Mind looking Mind blowing. Well, because we've had sightings of Bigfoot up here, especially on the Apache Reservation. And so it was fitting. It fit, it fit the uh, narrative up here on the White Mountains for art anyways. That's what we did. That's why we did Bigfoot. <laughs> we could have done numerous other things, but Bigfoot was the one. <laughs> well, we just want to sell him. I mean, he's actually a landmark here in Sholo. The Chamber of Commerce has him up for, as a landmark. I think you we know. might get egged or toilet papered or something like that if we sell him, but yeah, you know, we're ready. we're ready to deal with that because um, we're ready to get move on to something else. Yeah, something a bit different. Yeah. What's your next project? Uh, I don't know. Something big. Bigger. <laughs> Bigger, yeah. <laughs> maybe a silverback gorilla. <laughs> yeah, maybe something. Over like top that. of the treetops. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. When you walk up to this, it's it's incredible the size of this. And mm -hmm. as people state that this is the actual size of Bigfoot, maybe this is the adult size, but man, look at this thing. Yeah, he's He's big. I would hope that, uh, I wouldn't, I would hope that he's not this big. <laughs> you know, Because <laughs> he is big. We've been around Sholo, Arizona, talking with the community, the people, the experiencers, and the evidence. Is the elusive Bigfoot among us in this town. It seems to me from the people that we've spoken to, it definitely is. Do you believe in Bigfoot? Is Sasquatch the real deal? Until we find the dead body or capture one alive, we'll never know, but we're gonna be keeping an eye on the phenomenon. And if you've captured anything amazing, submit it to us right here at Third Phase of Moon. My contact is in the description below. Keep your eyes on the skies, everybody. Blake Cousins, we'll see ya next time. If the crash retrievals are truth, then all bets are off. It's very hard for people to get their minds around where the real power is. And it's not at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. The reality is something much more stark. They've been working on this for 60, 70, perhaps 80 years. The reason why the government is talking about these UFOs now, they're getting ready for the next level of war. Are these objects a national security concern? They're proffering a narrative of a national security threat that doesn't exist. I call them alien reproduction vehicles. They're made by private corporations somewhere on this planet. Technology from Roswell from 1947 has largely been held back from us. Portal technology, teleportation, whatever you can imagine, it's already been done. The biggest secrets are not the zero point energy in electric robotics. It's the science of consciousness. All their communication systems are moving through the consciousness field and are thought actuated. The people at the CIA call it WSFM, weird science and frickin' magic. The transdimensional interstellar technology will benefit humanity. That has been tremendous disinformation. The media is keeping secrets with the government. These are lethal, vicious people. And I'm focused on exposing the extraordinary technologies that they would want to keep secret.
no aspect of life on Earth will be unaffected by it.